Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Marcus. This past couple of weeks, my wife and I got some awesome news. We are pregnant. Hooray! My wife is pregnant with a beautiful baby boy, and to celebrate, I am going to be making him a nursery room sign. In this video, I am busting out the scroll saw. It has been a little bit since I've had it on the channel. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a circular, chevron style, chevron pattern nursery room sign. If you want to know how to cut out letters and make cool things like that with the scroll saw, this is the video for you. So for most nursery room signs, you take a piece of three quarter inch and you make a circle out of it. If you are feeling lazy or you don't have the tools to do it, you can go to Lowe's and they sell pre-cut circles, but they're super expensive. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm gonna take a piece of this uh, three quarter inch birch, use my router and make my very own circle. I need to find the radius of the size of the circle that I want. So it's gonna be the shortest measurement divided by two. This side is 23 on the dot. We're gonna find the center of 23 and off the top of my head that is 11 and a half. So we'll go in here, center it up 11 and a half. That's where we will drive our screw. You wanna leave that screw a little loose because if you tighten it up, it's just gonna be difficult to spin the whole thing. You can also use a nail. A lot of people use a nail. One thing that's important to note is that you need to lift this up off the table. So I'm gonna put some braces underneath it so that uh, I don't cut my table. The last thing I'll say before you make your cut is to have your router turned on in the up position. So don't have it touching the wood at all because it will jump out of your hands and maybe murder you, uh, which is possible. And then when it is on, slowly lower it down into your piece, let it make its initial cut and then drive it through. And that my friends is how you make a circle. This would have cost like 20 bucks at, at Lowe's. So, Something that was destined for the trash is now treasure. Okay, so now because I've cut all these strips, I've cut this circle, and I know where the center of the circle is, I'm gonna use one of these strips to mark a horizon line that I'm gonna work off of. Take this, mark that up right on center. Now, my pattern that I decide to create, whatever I decide, will come straight off of this line and it'll most likely be diagonal lines this way and this way because that's what I want and that's what my wife wants. So that's what we're gonna do. So now that we've got the strips cut for the pattern and the circle cut because I like 45 and it makes life easier, especially on the miter saw, chopping that angle. We'll cut everything at 45, cut off the excess, use the excess for extra strips and uh, lay them down, baby. So you can see, I'm just gonna ride that line, but I have a little tip for you. If you have a, a solid straight piece of wood, you can take it, run it across as your hard line and straighten those out, run those up right along it. I'm actually gonna secure this down to this board because obviously after I am done, uh, you're not gonna be able to see this. So I can just go ahead and screw straight into this piece of wood and run these all up along it. So when you've got this side all nice and laid out beautifully, just, uh, you know, duplicate it for the other side. There's really nothing to glue in a nail on these strips to the circle. All I will tell you is make sure you have good glue coverage and make sure your nails are not too long because it will shoot through and nail your board to your workbench. After everything's secured, you're gonna to wanna to trim off all of the excess wood that you have hanging over the sides. I used my bandsaw to do that, but you can use a jigsaw or anything like that. And then after that, to make sure everything was flat and round, I used a router with a flush trim bit to get a nice clean cut around all the edges. So that is as much as I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come up and sand all this. I am not even gonna to attempt to go into this grain when it's coming at me and I'm going into it, it's gonna explode. That's just how it's gonna do. This one right here already tried, so I'm going to sand that gently. And these ones also are coming at me, so definitely not gonna route those ones off. I'm gonna have to trim them up a little bit better with a saw and then sand them flush. So 
So in the past I said I would never forsake the blue tape trick, which is putting blue tape down on your MDF and then putting your template down on the blue tape so that whenever you're done cutting, you can just pull the blue tape off. But someone told me that if you spray directly onto your template and then set that down on the MDF, it'll come off easier. So we're gonna test that theory here and see if it works. The last thing I'm gonna do before I cut these up is I think I'm gonna double up this MDF so that the first name is thicker than the last, or the middle name. So uh, I'm gonna do that now. So like always when scrolling, you're gonna to wanna to go straight for the center of whatever you're working on. You cut out those first because it's easier to do it now than when everything is all cut out and it's smaller and harder to deal with. After that, you'll just finish up by cutting out all the rest of the letters. One thing that's been really helpful for me to think about is that things don't have to be perfect. After I've cut everything out, I always go to the one inch belt sander and round the things that are supposed to be round and flatten the things that are supposed to be flattened. You don't have to be perfect on your cuts. Maybe some people would disagree with me, but I always go back and touch up on all of my pieces. Securing the pieces is always the most nerve-wracking part of the process, but luckily the name Grayson had seven letters in it, so I, I just made a center of the Y, and then I based all the other letters off of it and just moved slowly out to the outside of the circle. I used Starbond CA glue to secure everything, and that goes for probably everything in my shop. If you see me using super glue or any kind of CA glue, it is always Starbond because it is immediate, fast-acting, and it is awesome. If you've got any questions about any of the processes I used in this video or any of the products I used in this video, let me know in the comment section down below and I will be sure to answer all of those questions. Thanks for watching my video. Come back next week and watch the next one. Alright, bye.